Okay, so today is the long-awaited day of getting to harvest our onions. Um, we planted them in a couple different places this year just to kind of see how they would fare. Because we haven't even had a full season here yet, it's hard to know because every land is different, every soil is different. There's a lots of trees around here and hills and because we're so surrounded by so much water as well, the soil composition is so different than anything I've ever gotten to play with. So we are doing a lot of different test plots. We did tomatoes in a couple different places, onions in a couple different places. We planted root vegetables in three or four different places just to kind of see as far as the sun goes, as far as the, you know, where our shade is going to hit and everything. Um, and so I think that it's, it's taught us a lot, which is really cool. So let's see. This is the first onion from this area. Let's see. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at this puppy. Oh, snap. How cool is that? <laughs> I just wanted to show you quick what it is that we do with our um, with our asparagus and our strawberries. So because asparagus likes to keep their roots protected, they like to stay kind of moist and cool, but they also like heat and sun in order to grow. Um, so what we did was we planted strawberries all along the bases of our asparagus and it turned out beautifully. I'll show you. Years ago, this was a greens farm. Cody kind of mentioned it um, earlier. All this stuff was just like here. This whole field used to be like greens, just like this, all of this when they left they kind of just left everything behind so this is actually one of the positives of that which is that certain kinds of like mescaline mixed greens mustards all sorts of good things like that there's self-seeded kale everywhere there's beautiful beautiful patches of sorrel and watercress and all sorts of wonderful stuff all over the property which once we got rid of all the plastic and the garbage and debris that was kicking around and cleared all the brambles back all these really amazing things started to pop up. So basically what we did was we just went around and weeded around everybody we wanted to keep. So in this area here, you can see there's a patch of kale. And what we did was we just basically went around. We could see where the kale was poking up and we just kept weeding around it. You can see all these things have come back up since, you know, but even this, this is lamb's quarters. So even this is edible when it's young and tender anyways, I wouldn't eat it once it goes to seed like this, gets a little tough. But uh, yeah, so basically all we did was we just decided to maintain this patch. We left kale in some other places as well because there were different varieties and fun stuff. But all we really did was when we seen the little bitty kales popping up, we just went around, pulled the weeds back and tried to give them the space that they need to grow so that we can have this to harvest from all year. Now, we've been eating this kale for months. It's still coming up. One of the easy ways that you can harvest kale so that it keeps coming up is just to pull the bottom leaf. So you basically just pull and twist from the bottom and then it just will keep coming and coming. And a lot of times different kale varieties too will actually come right into the winter. It's quite a hardy plant. So if we just keep harvesting the lower leaves like this, this will just keep coming and coming and coming. It's really quite beautiful. So these are the more harvested ones here where all the lower leaves are gone. And then you can see that we've just left the top tufts to keep growing. And these were harvested just last week and already they're growing back and doing a really wonderful thing. So you can see how taken back those guys are. 
And then eventually, once they have some more time to grow, they'll fill right back up and do a beautiful thing and they'll just grow taller. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a beautiful crop. It took some energy in the beginning, definitely, to just weed around it, choose a patch to maintain, and then just keep at it. But once we got to this point, I mean, it's just kind of a cut and come again and again and again kind of plant. We even have a friend down the road who stopped by recently and harvested a bunch of it for her animals. So as I said, we've only been here, we haven't even been here a full season yet. So we haven't felt it was a safe enough space to integrate animals. When we left our other farm, we actually gifted the chickens that were at our place to a family that's just up the road from where we're at now. And so once we get safety things in place, once we have adequate fencing and we've renovated the chicken coop and all that fun stuff, uh, then we're gonna, definitely gonna be integrating livestock in again. The goal is next year. So we have all of this excess beautiful food that would be amazing for animals. And while we can definitely just put it in our compost, I thought it would be nice to be able to feed some of the local animals good food too. Yeah, we'll just let it go to seed year after year and keep doing the things. And I think most likely we'll choose different areas, different years, so that there's some crop rotation because there's certain things like certain bugs that just love brassicas. There's certain bugs that just love tomatoes, potatoes, whatever. And uh, so it's always good to get some rotation in your crops because then it cut, it's a natural way of cutting down on pests. And also because different plants give and take different things from the soil, it's also a really good way to maintain the health of your soil. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd give a little extra snippet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Mm -hmm.